I'm sure that all of you have heard the old saying that uh, there's only two things in life that we can be certain of, death and taxes, right? Okay, well, I'm going to present something else to you today. The other thing we can be certain of is change. Change. It is constant. And what's amazing about that is in today's global economy and competitive climate that we live in, change is happening so rapidly that it's really hard to, to keep up. I don't know if you ever read the book Alice in Wonderland, but there's a story, there's a part in Alice in Wonderland where she says, sometimes it feels like I have to run twice as fast just to stay in place. I mean, I think as business owners, we probably feel that way. Whatever is hot and cool today is yesterday's news tomorrow. And so what do we do? What does that mean to us? Well, you know, I, I, I look back on my own career and I had an advertising and PR agency in the late 80s. And I worked out of my home, which was unheard of back then, right? And I had a virtual team, which we were virtual before anybody even coined the phrase virtual. And I remember when we would send out press releases to the media, we had to hope and pray that they would get there in the mail, in the snail mail, and that they would actually open the envelope and read it. And then we'd have to follow up by phone. And then we got a fax machine. Man, were we cool. I mean, we could fax those things right out to the media and be right on top of it for our clients. We were so cool. And just the other day, I got a contract for a speaking engagement, and I was on the road, so I had no way to, to print it and you know, scan it, sign it, and scan it back in. So I was at a hotel in the business center, and I called the lady, and I said, well, do you have a fax number? And she said, we don't have a fax machine. And I thought, there you go. You know, fax machines were cool, hot technology, and now whoever faxes anything, unless you do it through your computer, right? So change is inevitable. And so I want you to just kind of walk back through memory lane with me a little bit here and think about the way we used to do business. You know, we were all about communities. We were all about businesses, you know, helping us socialize. Maybe you had a, a drugstore that had a, a, a little soda fountain in it. That's the way we connected. You know, here they're doing some square dancing, but you know, you had community events like this. Maybe it was the church picnic. But you, there, that's the way you connected with your neighbors. And even courting. You know, even courting. You know, your next door neighbor says, oh, your little Susie needs to meet my little Jimmy. That's how people got together. Pretty plain and simple. And I found this the other day on Facebook. This was my social network when I grew up. <laughs> I grew up in a town of 3,000 people, and we pretty much drove up and down the street and around the courthouse square, and that was our social networking platform. But today, what has happened is that same concept has obviously now all gone online, right? Think about it. Facebook. How many of you have connected with an old high school boyfriend or girlfriend on Facebook? Come on, come on, raise your hand. Or maybe you didn't connect, but maybe you stalk them a little bit, right? Does she still look good? <laughs> okay, just check it. So, you know, this is where we share our memories. This is where we connect, just like we did in our local communities. But now, you know, technology has taken those same connections online. LinkedIn, for more professional ways. You know, people used to put ads in the newspaper when they wanted help. The one ads, right? Now, where's the best place to go to look for a job? LinkedIn. The best place to find a good candidate for your, your small business, LinkedIn. And Twitter. Look what Donald Trump, whether you agree with him or not, okay, but look what Donald Trump has done with Twitter. It has changed the whole climate of this pre presidential election. He's got something like 8.5 million followers on Twitter. And what's so great about it is, there's no lag time. It is real time. If he thinks it, he tweets it, and it's out there. Snapchat. I don't know. Anybody in here use Snapchat? You do. Okay. 
I don't use Snapchat, but I mean, I know all the, the kids do, right? Snapchat. Periscope, video online. It used to be, I had one of the first, first uh, video websites on the internet. And we, we, streaming video was very complex back then. You may have remembered when streaming video first came out, you had to know the speed of your modem and what, what type it was, whether it was QuickTime or whatever it was. And it was in this little square box and it would freeze up on you. Does anybody remember that? And then, you know, now look at what we can do. We can do it with our cameras. You know, Knox over here is, is streaming live on Facebook as we're standing here talking. And it's all in real time. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about that later on, about what this means to your business in terms of having all this technology at your fingertips. But I, this is just a quick look at some of the things. We even look at other business models. Years ago, when we bought albums, you go to the record store, they had listening rooms. If you didn't know the music, you could go into the listening room and, and listen to it for a little bit. What do you do now when you want to get some new music? You download it, right? You go to iTunes and you preview it, right? No more, no more listening rooms. Outdated. Radio. Terrestrial radio. I don't know. How many of you listen to, to regular terrestrial radio? Okay, Jason. All right, okay. A few of us. Most of us are listening either satellite or streaming on our web and podcasts. Look at the rise of podcasts and what that has meant, how we learn, how we talk to each other, how we, how we get the information out. And what all this means to you and your small business, it's the democratization of broadcast. Now I'm going to go back to my little advertising agency that I had, PR firm. You know, when we wanted to get coverage for our clients in the media, we only really had radio, TV, and print. That were, that's what was our options. And we had to pitch and pitch and pitch to get just a little bit of coverage. Now you, as a small business owner, can create your own publishing and media site. You can be your own media powerhouse and build your own following. You can become a celebrity in your industry and your business. You want to be the go-to person, the authority for what you do, for your product and service. And I think that one of the best examples of this is a gentleman I worked with from North Carolina. And he happens to be in uh, residential real estate. Anybody in here real estate? You are. It's very competitive, isn't it? Very, very hard. So what he did was he started a blog a blog talk radio show, and a newsletter. And he became, in his community, the go-to person for residential real estate. He was a star. In my own town, my hometown of St. Louis, there is a financial advisor. Anybody in the financial business? <laughs> yeah, you are, okay. So um, he became, he, he started a radio show, and now he does it. On, online. But he also became, built such a name for himself by just being out there. And my point is, this is all at your fingertips right now. You can do it. The only thing you holding you back from having that kind of status and building your business like this is you. And I remember when I, once again, when I had my advertising agency, my clients would say to me, Susan, I don't have any money to market my business. And now with these tools at your fingertips, people say to me, well, I don't have enough time. But you don't, time is a valuable resource and an asset, but you don't have time to lose. You have to be participating in these things to grow your business. So here are some questions to ask yourself, okay? So when you go back and look at your business, what product or service that you currently deliver can you reimagine delivering it with technology. How can you enhance that delivery of that product or service with technology? Because technology, we're taking these old traditional business lines and we're just taking them online in new, more expedient, more cost-effective, 
more profitable and productive ways. And how can I leverage the internet and technology to reach smaller audiences? So one of my favorite mantras is, the riches are in the niches. So you can't be everything to everybody, right? You just can't. I see a lot of small business owners who lose their focus because they try to deliver too much, especially early on. Someone says, can you do this for me? Yeah, I can do that. I can do that. I can do that. And before long, you're too torn in too many directions. Remember this. When you're running your business, when you say yes to one thing, you're effectively saying no to something else because there's only so much bandwidth. There's only so much you can take on. So you have to choose wisely. But the riches are in the niches. And I'll talk a little bit more about this later, but sometimes that niche is so narrow that maybe where you are today, there's not enough of a market where you are. But if you take that online, you can reach those niche customers or clients around the globe. You can be that, that streamlined provider specialist for that one special thing. Now, I, have a, I had a lady that I worked with in her business, and she was an IT consultant. And she had a pretty big staff, but they were going into all different types of companies working on their IT. And she was competing and knocking heads against the same people all the time and felt like she was always having to compete on price. So she stepped back and took a look at her business. And what she realized was that attorneys are prime, prime for really good IT support. And at the time, a lot of attorneys hadn't moved things online. So she went in and learned everything she could about running a law office and what their needs were. And she became an expert in providing IT services to legal firms. She grew her company to $50 million. Not bad for a service providing company, right? Because she found a niche. She found an unmet need in the marketplace and she became the problem solver. So the riches are in the niches. Now, one of the areas that is so hot for technology today is online education. You can go to any level of education from pre-K all the way up to probably getting your doctoral degree. It's all available online. One of my team members actually got an MBA class from the University of Southern California and he lives in Nashville because he did it all online. And there are all types of learning from Googling something on YouTube to you know how to cook gluten-free pasta or you know, I don't know. I bought a light kit the other day trying to put the lights together and I couldn't figure it out. So I went on Google to figure out how to get the lights together on YouTube. All types of learning. But what this means for your business is you can be a source of learning too for your customers and your clients. So you can provide online education about your product or service. You can take all of that online so that your customers can access that from any, at any time from anywhere. And it's really a very small investment. <coughs> a lot of the coursework you find online is free. Some of it is a small price. But online education is one of the fastest growing sectors of technology growth. Now here's actually happens to be one of my favorites though. I wrote about this company, they're based in the UK, it's called Scoove. And the reason I'm fascinated by this is because when I was in high school, I taught piano lessons. And I would have to sit there for a half an hour with some little kid who really didn't want to be there, right? Hadn't really practiced. And I'd maybe make five bucks in a half an hour. And by the way, so the one thing I learned from that experience is that the one-to-one -one business model, yeah, I don't really like it. Volume is good. <laughs> Being able to replicate yourself is good. So when I saw this, I loved it. They are teaching piano lessons online. Talk about the oldest 
uh, business, one of the oldest businesses that is out there that's always been traditionally sit down with your teacher, maybe she had a ruler to slap your hands because you weren't doing it right, and take your piano lesson. Now you can go online and learn to play the piano. You can do it in the middle of the night. You can do it from anywhere. And what's great about these guys at SCOOF, it's not a one-to-one -one business model. They're actually scaling their business and building a model that is sustainable. One of the things that I talk about a lot is what makes a real, truly scalable, sustainable business. And it is about having a product or a service that can be taught, repeat, repeated, and consistently delivered. I actually am going offline here a little bit, but I'm auditioning for a show with the Discovery Channel next week. And it's all about exit strategies for small businesses. And what I find with small business owners is we start our businesses and we get going and we're really involved in them. But then what happens? If we want to sell or we get sick, we have no value because we are the business. Without us, there is no product or service that works. And so helping business owners understand how to build that scalability and how to build a business that can sustain itself without your day-to-day -day involvement is critical. And this is just a perfect example. So if any of you want to learn to play the piano, right here it is, OK? If, or if you quit like when you were 10 years old or whatever, want to pick it up again, you just go to Scoop. Professional development is another area that technology has really, really changed and transformed. I mean, here we are in this room, right? But that looks familiar, right? Uh-oh. <laughs> we locked somebody out, I guess. Thank you. <laughs> oh, well. So, OK. So I guess it's nothing important. So you, you see these packed rooms professional development, you sit in seminars, you take notes, and then you go home, and what do you do? You put the notes down, right, and it's pretty much gone, right? I don't know, you guys are gonna leave here and you might remember one or two things that I've said today on how technology can transform your business, but, you know, if, and this is gonna be online, right? It's gonna be online, so you can go back and listen to it. That's what technology does. So, instead of sitting in a room like that, taking notes, what do we do? We go participate in webinars. And this is another opportunity for your small business. Create a webinar for your customers and clients that is truly informative and helpful. The technology is there, and you are then becoming a teacher. It's a philosophy that I call reach and teach. So when you go out and you speak to people and you talk about your expertise and your business and your product and service. You know, you're not giving away the family farm. You are becoming the credible expert. And instead of them trying to go out there and do it themselves, they're going to come to you because you are seen as the credible expert. And webinars is just one other way that you can actually provide that kind of value to your customers. This is a site that I have. It's called the Small Business Expert Academy. So I'm showing you this just to share with you that I, I actually do what I preach. Um, it is a learning site for small businesses. So you can go on there. It's interactive. You can talk to me at any time of day. And get. I will help you build your business plan. I will help you create a marketing plan. Um, new content goes into it monthly, uh, anywhere from 10 to 20 new video segments. And each segment has its own worksheets, uh, resource materials that you can download so that not only are you hearing me help you build it, you've got actionable plans to actually deliver it to your business. Um, so it's, it just shows that, I mean, it's affordable and it's, it's content that is the king on the internet. Flea markets. How many of you have been to a flea market? Yeah, okay. Have you seen that show on HGTV, Flea Market Flip? You haven't? Okay. Anyway, so flea markets. I mean, this is, this is what it used to look like. Junk all over the place, right? And if you wanted to get rid of your stuff in your basement, you had a garage sale 
or you take it to the flea market. What do we do now? eBay. That's, that's today's flea market. Technology has shifted it online to eBay. Craigslist. You know, the, the way I use these two sites, eBay, I, I sell stuff that's easy to ship. Craigslist, if I have a, something big, I put it on Craigslist. And then Etsy. How many of you are familiar with Etsy? Okay. For the hobbyist, you sell jewelry, you make great, uh, you knit great sweaters, whatever. That's where you put it. You don't take it to the community bazaar. You put it up on Etsy. And now suddenly, instead of your local community being your audience, the globe is your audience. And the other thing I like about technology today is the ability to collaborate. So we've seen what Amazon has done, Amazon's marketplace, where you can sell your products. They collaborate with lots of businesses. Walmart's doing the same thing now, bringing in collaborative businesses. You as a business owner, whether it is making your team look bigger because you can now work with anybody anywhere. So let's just say you get an RFP for a project and it's a little bit broader than your scope. You can go out and find the resources to pull in, to collaborate on that project and build a larger team. Um, this one, this I love because it's a community. They built a community and then turned it into a business model. So as you're looking at technology opportunities in your business, obviously you're not going to be able to have great success unless you have somebody who wants to visit your website or talk to you or connect with you, right? So this company called um, Creative, they actually built a community of artists that would share ideas. And from that, once they got that critical mass, they were able then to start developing products to sell to that marketplace. So they had a built-in audience. Now, you know, a lot of people come to me because I did have an internet company, and we built it from zero to millions of unique visitors a month with no advertising budget, by the way. So it was just sheer will. Um, and, a, and a huge database of about 300,000 people we didn't start off that way. But people have come to me and they're like, well, I've, I want to build this website and then I want to do affiliate marketing. How many are you familiar with affiliate marketing? Okay, so that's when you put somebody else's product or service on your site and then if they go there and buy, you get some money for it. Google ads on your site, that's a great example. So they, they want to do this sort of thing and they, or they want to get a sponsor, uh, like an AT&T to sponsor their website. Well, that's all well and good, but if you don't have the critical mass, if you don't have the eyeballs, you're not going to be successful. So whether it's building your database or whether it's building uh, a community on your website, on my website I actually have something called Push Up Social. So it's a community that connects to your Facebook pages, your Twitter pages, but also is just housed right there on my website, SusanSolovic.com. So people can come in, they can ask questions of each other, they can talk to me, um, and, and it's, it's affordable. It's a WordPress widget. It's not a big deal. Pawn shops. <laughs> They've been around forever, right? Pawn shops have gone onto the internet. Bartering is on the internet. In fact, uh, this website, actually, if you have something you want to pawn, they will take it, they'll keep it for a certain amount of time, and give you a small business loan. So here they're taking two older models and combining them through the internet. I actually interviewed a lady uh, who pawned her grand piano <laughs> for a business loan, $75,000 uh, for a business loan uh, for her Steinway grand piano through this website. Uh, luckily, she did well in her business and she got her piano back. So let's, let's take now, because we've talked about these examples, here are some more questions that you need to think about 
as you are beginning to look at your traditional business models and how technology could transform them. The biggest question is, are there enough people who would actually utilize it? You know, you can think it's the best thing since sliced bread, but other people may not. So you really have to do your uh, market research. And can you compete effectively with local options? So is it something that needs immediate gratification? Or is it something that, you know, you think, what, look at what Amazon's trying to do now. They're trying to get the same day delivery, right? Why? Because people don't want to wait even a day for their Amazon packages to arrive. So can you compete with those boots on the ground, so to speak, uh, options for your small business? And you know, here are some great examples. Does anybody remember the sock puppet? You do, right? Pets.com. They thought that we would all flock to buy our dog food and our kitty litter from their website. But who wants to pay for the shipping for a big thing of dog food, right? Or a big thing of kitty litter. And they spent so much money on advertising, too. And you might remember their Super Bowl ad. That they couldn't make it go. They couldn't get the lift off. It was easier for somebody to run to the local pet store or the grocery store and get their dog food and their kitty litter than to go on to pets.com. So they did not qualify the opportunity. This is another one, web van. Thumbs down. Seemed like a great idea. Your groceries delivered right to your door. But they couldn't do it in a timely fashion. They couldn't do it in, a, in a such a way to make a profit. And there wasn't enough demand for their product. Now we're seeing some versions of this come back around. And I think this is a great example, but Uber, got anybody here use Uber? Yes, I love Uber. So Uber has its drivers out on the roads, right? And they obviously are not going to have a passenger for every minute of the day. So to fill this ex excess capacity for their businesses, their drivers, they have started food delivery here in New York City. It's a, it's another way to begin to look at different ways your product and services, <coughs> excuse me, can be uh, delivered in new, in new and unique ways. This one I love too, because we all, I don't know, at, at the, during the holidays for the kids' stockings, I go to the dollar store. And I just, you know, stock up on little trinkets and trash for their, for their Christmas stockings. Well, now this company, Holler, has taken the dollar store concept and put it online. It's fairly new. Um, I don't know if it's going to be successful or not, but check it out. Everything's anywhere from a dollar to five dollars. But it will be interesting to see now if this old business model of the dime store or the dollar store or whatever will be successful online. Now, I mentioned earlier courting. You know, where you get your neighbor introduced you to somebody. And if you recognize Barbara Streisand there in Hello, Dolly, she was a matchmaker. And that's kind of the way it was done. She was a matchmaker. But today, what do we do? eHarmony. Big site, popular with the singles. You can get matched up with your perfect mate. Or so they say. But here's what I really love. You know, I said riches are in the niches. So you can look at a site like eHarmony and think, well, wait a minute. Somebody's already doing it. I'm too late. But look what happened here. So you've got um, Our Time, which is for people over 50. You've got Christian Mingles, which is for Christians who want to find someone else who shares their faith. But I really love the one down here in the middle. It's for farmers only. <laughs> I mean, seriously, think about that. Farmers only. But, you know, you think about their lifestyle. And, you know, I know a city girl might think, ooh, that sounds really, you know, cool and romantic to live on a farm. But you know what? When you're up before the sun comes up and you're out milking the cows and feeding the chickens, it's not too cool. 
So they created this website for farmers only so they can match people who understand those differences. And that's the riches in the niches. That's finding that vertical one area that's not being serviced by the broader perspective. <clears throat> Business, <clears throat> sorry, matchmaking also comes in business. So you might know these sites like Thumbtack, uh, <clears throat> quali <clears throat> Quality Home Care for Seniors. And, <clears throat> you know, Thumbtack, I just hired somebody in Jupiter, Florida by posting on Thumbtack and getting bids. I would have never been able to find anyone that easily without a site like Thumbtack. And if you look at your own business, you know, for me, for example, let's say I'm a small business expert, so uh, on my website, what if I made a list of people that I believe are good providers for my market? I vetted them. And then you could come and check them out, see what other business owners are saying. You know, we, we all know home advisors and, uh, what is it, Angie's List? But what if there were just a, a list and a site like that just for plumbers. Think about how narrow you could go and is there a need for it and can you bring that online? So here's <clears throat> some things to do to get you started if this is something you want to explore to take your traditional business model to the next level. So is location a historically limiting factor for growth and can this uh, internet solve the problem? So that goes back once again. Is the market where you are too small and too limiting for what you want to do? And could opening it up to the globe be the right answer for delivering this product or service? What about time constraints? Are they an issue for the market? You know, once again, it goes back to what I was talking about. Do you need to be local? Or can you supply the, the demand from being online? Are their niches too small to be profitable in a local setting? So once again, I, we mentioned this earlier, but if you want to sell a um, very specialized type of widget and you know that in your local town there might be eh, maybe a thousand people or so who use that particular product, what if you took that online? What would that then become? A hundred thousand? Two hundred thousand? Can your online bus business offer features that local businesses can't? And then are there solid ways for you to market your business without jeopardizing your cash flow and profitability? That goes right back to the pets.com. You know, you've got to really, how are you going to get the word out? How are you going to build that critical mass in order to make your, your online business successful? I'm getting close on time here. <clears throat> so you want to, when you're getting started, you want to look around you and think locally first. And you kind of really want to start on a smaller scale. And you want to make sure that your technology and marketing is in place. So you want to do beta testing. And then you want to, um, as, as, you've, as you're being able to develop your product and confirm that this is going to work for you, can you develop those collaboration opportunities and partnerships in order to grow faster? in order to build your business, to bring that critical mass in and to reach the market that you need to reach. And I just love this saying, go for it now, the future is promised to no one. So there you go. <laughs> so j the only thing I will say in, in closing is, if you're jumping on the bandwagon now, you're already too late. So we really need to step back, reflect, think, and, and begin to think about how technology can transform our business models and what we're doing today.